Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the Drill Down Profit in Loss. In this week, I'm gonna show you how to create this incredible profit and loss sheet with drill down capabilities and we're gonna do it all from scratch. You're gonna watch every step, every formula, every function and every line of code. I cannot wait, so let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining us this week. I've got a really fantastic training and we're gonna do it all from scratch as we do from time to time when we have a relatively easy application. This week is gonna be incredible. Now we've done profit and loss before, but never with drilled down capabilities. And we're gonna show you how to do that just on a single click. We're gonna go over every step for you right here. So I st hope you'll stick with us until the end. If you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and click that subscription down below. And of course that notification icon bell, that'll ensure that you get the trainings as we release them. If you like this template, all you can download it for free using your email or your Facebook messenger from the links below. However, if you want 250 of my best templates and a great way to support the channel, you can do that for just a low price. And that's all of my templates for a very low price. And I also have the availability of the PDF codebook. So you can get every line of code in a beautifully organized PDF documents, and that's with every single template. That's gonna help support our channel. I'll include the links down below. That's a great way to support us. All right, let's get started. This is what we're going to be creating. I've got another blank workbook in which we're going to start on, but this is the sample we'll be have, having from and two dates. We'll be able to print report, refresh the report, and we'll be able to drill down on any type of income, cost of goods, or even expenses just by clicking on it. And of course, we're gonna be able to drill up just by clicking on that. Okay, so that's gonna create our report for us. It's gonna include total income, cost of goods sold, and then the gross profit, which is simply the total income minus the total cost of goods sold. And that's gonna get us our gross profit. And then we're gonna subtract the expenses in that. And that's gonna get us our net profit. That's a standard profit and loss. Drill down capabilities is a great feature because we wanna know we, if we have 24,951 materials sold, we wanna know what transactions are making up for that, right? We wanna know all the transactions within the given date period of those transactions. So that's what it's gonna do us for. It's gonna give us all those transactions. Now this data is gonna come from a database called transactions here. I've got a transaction here. This is all the income and expense transactions. So this is our original data. This is what we're pulling pulling it from. And so what we're going to be doing is pulling it and then bringing it in, summarizing it and bringing it into the profit and loss. So how do we create one? We're gonna be doing that, of course, from scratch. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna move this one aside and I've got a brand new one actually, which is just gonna be blank here. And this is the blank one that we're gonna be starting on. So we're gonna create every single step for you step by step, including all the code. So we're gonna get started right away on this. First thing what we wanna do is we wanna give it a title. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this drill down and I've already uh, updated some of the fonts to make it easier profit and loss right so that's what we're going to do drill down profit and loss that's what we're going to be creating we want some icons in there we want to create some buttons and we want some from and to dates now the from and to dates we're going to be putting I'm going to put that from date right inside e so what I want inside the d3 we're going to be putting the from right I want that from to go right here I want to know and then we're going to skip one that's going to be our date and then we're going to put in two here we want to know the two dates so these are going to be dates let's just say 1 1 22 and then we'll put in let's say three same with our sample 31 22 okay so here we've got our dates now I'm going to call these in white I also want a background on this and we want some buttons. So why don't we insert the buttons now? And what we'll do is we're gonna do insert, okay? And then what I wanna do is I wanna insert a shape. So we're gonna do illustrations and then shapes and then we'll just do a rectangle. We're gonna create two buttons, one for the print, and one to refresh the report. So they're gonna be about yay size here and I'll give them a specific color in a second. So this is gonna call it refresh, refresh report. We've got some icons to go along with that and that's something like that. But what I wanna do is I wanna leave room for the icon. So I'm gonna right justify that. And we also wanna give it a color that's relatively specific to our, which is kind of a brown I'll find. So I'll give it a shape format and then we'll use a shape field. Now I've got some pre-saved colors, so we'll do that, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that for the print button. So I'm gonna do D, control D is gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna bring that right over here. And then we're gonna call this print report. So I'm just gonna update that here called print report. So we got the print report. We can make this one a little bit smaller. We want some icons. I've got some saved icons. Actually, we got borders around here, which we don't really need. So I'm gonna hold down the shift 
and I'm going to select both buttons, and then I'm going to go into the shape format, shape outline, we're going to go none. So it's basically no outline on that. We don't need an outline. Now what we want to do is we want to insert the icons, right? I've just got a few icons here saved in the table. So what we're going to do is insert, and then we're going to do a picture, right? And this is going to, based on this device, and I've got an icon here we're going to insert, insert, and I'm going to hold down the control. I've got the printer, the refresh, and our icon that we're going to use. So I'm going to insert all those. I'm going to change those to right around 0.2. So our icon here, this is going to be our drill down icon. I'll make that bigger. Okay, now we've got some icons that are in white. Now we can't really see them, but that's okay. I'm going to insert a background on this. That's going to help us also. You saw the background on the sample. So we're going to click on the background. And I've got one saved already, and it's going to be this background here that I've created. And I'm just going to put that in here. Okay, so now we've got a background. So now we can see our icons, which is kind of nice. I'm going to move that print report here. And I'm going to move that refresh right about here, okay? So I'll increase this a little bit, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the control, and I want them equal, of course, inside our middle, align the middle. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to group it. I like to have that group. And I'm going to do the same thing with here. I'm going to align the middle. So I'm holding down the control while selecting both. I'm going to align that middle, and I'm going to group it. All right, so I like that. That's the way it looks. And I'm going to take both those buttons, and I want them aligned in the middle as well. They're relatively worse. So I'm going to color these two holding down the control. I want that to be the white background. So we're just going to click on here, and then we'll go click on the white background. And that was according to our sample, so we have that. Okay, so now we also don't need grid lines in here. So inside the view, we're going to unclick the grid lines. Okay, so now we've got our, our title bar. Now what I want to do is I want a title bar. I've got one already merged and centered. But I also want to create some named ranges on this. Actually, let me clear those names. I have some saved, but I want to clear them because I want to recreate them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one from date. So that's going to be called FROM from DT. Okay, and that's the named range I'm going to assign to this. And I'm going to call this one to date. So we're going to go TO and then DT. So that's going to be the to date. And that way we can use these in formulas. We can use these in the code. It's really easy to work with when we have that. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to put that title right here. So I want to call it profit and loss, but I want the title to be dynamic based on the from and the to date. So we're going to use a formula on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do equals, and then what we're going to do is profit and loss, L O loss. Okay, and then what do I want to do? I want to put, let's put a dash in there, and then I want to do from. Okay, so now I want to do the colon, and then a space, and then what do I want to do is and, right? So I want to add in the date, right? So basically it's from date, right? But I want to format that from date. I want to give it a specific format because if I just do from date, it may not be formatted correctly. Well, let's take a look. And, okay, so we'll do that. So and I also want to do add in the two date. So then we're going to do quotation marks. We're going to do another space, two, then the colon. And then I want another space. And then I want the two date here. So and the two date, okay? two dates. So we're going to look for that. Okay, so let's take a look at that. And then we could see now what we could do is we see it's not formatted. I also want to give it up, of course, so we can see it because it's in white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to format that right click that on format those cells. Sorry, it's off the screen. But basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a fill effects. And then I want a two color fill effects. So we're going to go from let's say, this light brown here to this darker brown here. So we're going to give it those two colors here. Okay, so that's the color I'd like, and click OK, and OK. Now we see that those dates aren't formatted, right? So that's what I was talking about. What we need to do is format those. So inside the formula, we can do that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a text formula, and I want to give it a very specific format. So what is that format? I'm going to give it comma, right? So then inside the quotation marks, mm slash dd slash yy, yy. Okay, we'll do four y's, okay? Then you're going to end the parentheses. We're going to do exactly the same thing for our two dates. So it's text. Then what we're going to do again is we're just going to copy this right here because we've already created it. We don't need to do that again. Copy that. Paste that in there. Okay, and we're good. Okay, so we're going to hit enter. So now we see profit and loss from 1, 1, 2, 3, 31. If we change the, change the dates here, right, we're going to see it automatically change inside that header. That's what I want because when we print that report, we want to know what dates are there. So we're going to change that. Okay, so it automatically changes. Very good. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to put inside here, I want to start building that report out. Now what I want to do, basically, I've got some little bit of saved information. We're going to save our work so far. So we have the header pretty much set up. We have the two buttons that we're going to use. So what we want to do is I want to put income here. I want to put income in that. So And then I want to put total income and then expenses, cost of goods sold, and so on and so forth. That's going to go in column C. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's going to involve a macro. When I refresh the report, I want all that information to be displayed in there. And I want it to come from our transactions. So what I want to do is I got all of our income and expenses here. I've got a transaction date. We've got an 
income type, whether it's income, cost of goods, or expenses, right? Well, obviously, we don't we could do this. This should be cost of goods sold, and that's sufficient. And along with that, we've got the account that's associated, right? We have like materials sold, labor stored, interest earned. Those are, of course, the accounts associated with income. And then maybe we have materials purchased and things like that. Those are cost of goods sold. And we have a description, and then we have an amount. So what I want to do first is I want to separate them. I want to know all the incomes within the given date. I want to know all the cost of goods sold. C-O-G-S, that's cost of goods sold. Never mind the formula here. I was just using that for some other thing. But basically what we're going to be doing is I just had the accounts here. And so basically what we did is we used this formula to look up the individual account. So that was a little quick way that I could associate this account with the income if we simply index that now of course we could get rid of that you know index and we could just copy and paste that but that's fine the way it is so what i really want to do now is i want to make sure that we associate all the income all the cost of goods sold and all the expense and i want them separated so what i'm going to do is we're going to create an advanced filter right like this right now we want the advanced filter is going to be a transaction date now we notice that we want to make sure that it's greater than or equal the from date that means all of our transaction dates we want only to create an advanced filter and we want the results greater than or equal the from date we also want the transaction dates less than or equal the to date and then what we want to do is we want to have vba add in income or expense or cost of goods sold. Once it does that, it's going to create some results. And I want those results to go in this area. I want all those income results to go here. And I want all the accounts to go here. And I want to know all of the expense results. So basically, we're going to create an advanced filter. As we insert this income, we want those results. I want those accounts to appear here. Then I also want to know the totals. And to know the totals, we're going to create a formula. And this formula is right here, okay, to help things move things along, right? Because we still have a lot of code to write. So what we want to do is as we add accounts, and we'll add them in, then I'm going to bring down the totals. I want to know the total for a specific account. For example, if I want to know the total for materials sold, and I copy that, and I put that in here. And I know the account is materials sold, right? So I paste those values in here. We know based on this, right, this, this formula here, it's going to be based on that first row that it's 24,000. How are we going to know that? Well, what I've done is I created some named ranges for this, and we can use those named ranges, income type, account, and amount. Let's go over some of those named ranges so that we can familiarize ourselves with what I've done. So we're going to go into the formulas and the name manager. And we're going to look at some of those named ranges. First thing we want to know, we've already focused on from date, right? What we're going to be doing is we're going to go into the transaction. Now, I've created four different named ranges, one for the account, one for the amount, one for the date, and one for the type. So that's all based on this here. So let's go over those. If I tab into it, we see that we've created an offset formula, offset. So I want to know all the transactions based on column C. Column C is where our account is. And I want to count all the transactions from column A. I'm just using column A to count. And that's because I know that every single transaction is going to have a date. So that field is required in column A. That's why we're using column A to count it. Now, we're also including the headers. Now, that's very, very important because when there's no data or when data gets deleted, we certainly don't want to create an error. So we always want to create, include the header in row two. And then we're going to go one row down. We're going to offset it one row down. We're also going to count. We're also counting including the headers, except we're subtracting one. So what that's going to do is make sure that we have the name range that includes all the data. So when we tab into that, we see those dancing ants. They go all the way down to the bottom of the last row of data here, as you can see, and it is located in row 367. So we know we've encompassed all the data. And I've done just that with all of them. I've got one for the amount field here. I've got one for the date field here. And I've got one for the transaction type field here. So knowing that we have those four transactions, transaction account, transaction amount, date, and type, we can use those in formulas to sum up using the sum if to notice how many materials sold within a given date period. That's why we use named ranges. So when we have an account associated here and I bring down this formula, it's going to total all of the materials sold for the given date using sum if. What are we summing? We're summing the transaction amount. And what we're going to do is we're going to include, we only want it based on those transactions if the date is greater than or equal the from date. This is why we create those named ranges because it's much easier to read this than it is a cell address. I also want to know the transaction date. Now that transaction date also has to be less than or equal the to date. 
and I also want to know the transaction account. We need to make sure that it's only for the transaction account located in AJ3, which is that first cell. Okay, so the idea is when I take this formula and I bring it down, how far are we bringing it down? Well, it depends on how many accounts are associated here. Our advanced filter that we're going to write, the code is going to create those accounts here based on the date range. Then what we're going to, it's going to create an advance based on the criteria here. It's going to create all the income. Of course, we would put in income here. VBA will take care of that, putting income here. It's going to list all those income accounts. Then we know we're going to determine the last row. Let's say the last row is 11. I'm going to take this formula. I'm going to bring it all the way down to row 11. That's going to ensure that we have the totals. Then all I need to do is just bring these directly inside the profit or loss. After I put the word income here, then I can just simply take those accounts and bring them in here. And then I can total it up here. So given that, we also have some totals. We need to know the total income, the total cost of goods sold, and the total expenses. Well, this summary total is going to help us a lot doing that, right? So we have income, cost of goods sold, gross profit, expenses, and net profit. So this formula is going to help us out because those are always going to be standard based on every single profit and loss. So we can use, again, a formula to determine that. Again, using sum if we're going to do transaction type. This time, we're going to do the transaction amount based on the transaction type of P2. Only those income accounts based on the transaction date greater than or equal to from date, the transaction date less than or equal to to date, right? So that's going to determine all the income. So we know, and I've given this a named range called total income. See the named range in the upper left? Total income. I've done the same thing with this, exactly the same formula. All we need to do is bring down this formula for income and cost of goods sold. I've given this a named range called total cost of goods sold. That's going to help us inside our VBA. We'll be able to use this named range inside the code. It's going to be very helpful. I also want to know the gross profit. The gross profit is simple math, right? It's simply the total income minus the total cost of goods sold. And that's going to get us our gross profit. Next up, we want expenses, right? We're going to use the same similar formula, again, based on the expenses here, right? Based on what is located in P5 right here. Also based on the transaction date, transaction date, same exact formula, only difference is we're basing it on this. That's going to get us our total expenses. Now, once we have our gross profit and we have our total expenses, we can determine the net profit because the net profit is simply the gross profit minus the expenses. That's going to give us our net profit. So again, every single one of these has a named range associated with it right here. Total income, total cost of goods sold, gross profit, total expenses, and net profit. We'll be using all those inside our code. So we know how we get to the information here. We know how we're going to get those using the advanced filter, which we're going to go over. So we're going to do that for each income. Then we're going to do it for cost of goods sold. Then we're going to do it for expenses, right? And that's the first part of our report. That's how we're going to create that P&L. So let's get to the code and start writing the code that's going to help us create this right here. Okay, we're going to get to that right now. We're going to go into the VBA inside the developers, Visual Basic here. Alt F11 is the shortcut there. And we're going to create, I've already created a module called Profit and Loss. This one here is our sample, okay? That's the one you sample, that includes all the code, right? We're not gonna be using that one, right? We're gonna be writing it from scratch. So we notice here, we've got two macros, right? There's nothing in them. One's called profit and loss refresh, and the other is called print report, okay? So we're gonna do those right now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is dimension some statements here for our variables. So we're gonna dimension the PL row. I need to keep track of the row that we're on and the profit and loss as long. Okay. Next up, I want to know the last transaction row. We're going to be running advanced filters, so we know the, need to know the last transaction row, and that's also going to be a long variable. Next up, I want to know the last income row, the last cost of goods sold row, and the last expense row. So last income row. Remember, we run those advanced filters. We need to know how many income there is, right, as long. Okay. Also, I want to know the last cost of goods sold row as long, and also the last expense row, last expense row as long. So that's really important. Okay, great. So next thing what I want to do is I want to make sure that we're going to clear. When we refresh that data, I want to make sure that we're clearing everything out of our report. So let's take a look inside that report now, and we're going to clear it out. So what I want to clear out, I want to clear everything from, we'll just say B, we're not going to probably use that column. B, let's say B7, we'll keep this as income. This is always going to be income. Nothing's ever going to change. So B7, right? And we're going to go all the way to, let's say, I999. And I want to clear all that out. So We've already created a, uh, this is called profit and loss. So that's the sheet that we're called profit, loss, dot range, B7 through I, and then we'll just do a large number, 
dot clear content. So we want to do is clear that report, clear contents. Clearing the report first, clear all values in existing report. Next, primarily what we're going to do is we're going to work directly with the transaction database, right? That's where all of our data is located. So we're going to do with transaction database. And I want to make sure that also we determine the last transaction row. So last transaction row is equal to a 999 and Excel up row. I'm using auto hotkey to automate that. So you saw the typing a little bit fast. So that's called the last transaction row, last transaction row. Okay, once we have that last transaction row, what I also want to do is I want to clear the contents of any previous data inside that. So what do we mean by that? Let's take a look inside and we get some results, right? If we've created some results, what I want to do is clear that out. Okay, so taking that out. So inside the transactions, I've got some data here. Remember data is here. So starting from AJ3 all the way to AQ, I want to clear that out, right? So any data that might be here from previous filters, I want to clear it out. So we can do that here. Dot range, we're going to start out at AJ3, AJ3 through AQ, and we'll just use a large number, 9999, dot clear contents. Okay, clear, so we're clearing that out, clear contents. Very good, so once we, let's see, clear previous results, clear previous results. Great, once those are cleared, then what we'll do is we're ready to set the accounts for the advanced filter. Remember I said we're gonna alternate. Once we create that advanced filter inside the workbook, we need to create that. So we've got our advanced filter right here. We've got our transaction dates here. We know we're gonna do, but what I wanna do is I wanna set this. The first one's gonna be income, second one's gonna be cost of goods sold, and the third one's gonna be expenses. So AC3 must equal the word income. So we're gonna write that here, so dot range, AC3, AC3 is going to be equal to income, setting that criteria, income. And what that's going to do is set the income criteria. So we only want to know those particular income accounts within the given dates, right? So only those transactions. Okay, set income criteria. Okay, now we're ready to run our advanced filter. Okay, and our advanced filter is going to be just this. We're going to focus on that. Again, that was auto hotkey. So what are we going to do? So the first thing what I want to do is I want to know A, that original date is A2 all the way through E, but we'll use, we're gonna use the blank for the results. Sometimes we want those results. So I'm gonna go through just adding one more column for blank in case we wanna use that A2 through F. So that's what's gonna be A2, so let's make this two, through F. And where's our criteria? Our criteria is located directly inside here. So let's take a look at our criteria and see what sells. Our criteria is here, AA2 all the way through AC3. So that's what we're gonna set our criteria, AA2 through AC3. And where do we want the results to go? Well, we want the results to go inside only our income. So we want to set our income. Where's our income here? Our income is located right inside here. We want those results. I only want the accounts to come here. AJ2, that's where our results are going to come. That's the only place that we have. So let's set that. Our results are going to come just that. The formulas we're going to bring down in the second line of code. So our results are simply, because I only want those accounts, right? to AJ2, so we just need to change this to J AJ2. That's sufficient, unique equals true. Okay, once we have that, what we wanna do is we wanna determine the last income row. So here we're gonna go, the last income row, it's equal to dot range, and we're gonna focus on AJ9999 and XLF. So actually, I got, I got that as a, let's see this one right here. XLR, okay, that's a quick AJ. This is going to give us our last results for our last ink row based on column AJ. Okay, great. Once we have that, that's the last ink row. Let's put a note on that, last income row. Okay, next up, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that there's actually income. So if the last income row is greater than two, right? Then what I want to do is bring down that formula. Let's say greater than two, then bring down that formula. How are we going to notice that? Well, let's take a look where that formula is located. That formula is located directly inside AK. So what I want to do is I want to take this formula and I want to bring it down as many rows as necessary inside AK. So we can do that with this line of code. Then dot range AK three through AK and the last ink row and last income row dot formula. We're using dot formula equals, and where's that formula located? It's located in AK2, dot range, AK2, dot formula, okay, formula. Okay, there we go. So bring down income formula. Why don't we just run the code and see where we are now and see how, how far we've got. All right, let's take a look. We're going to save our work, always, especially before running the code, see if we've got any issues. 
last row, right? We obviously we don't have a variable called last row. We need to make sure that that's last income row, right? That's the last last transaction row. That's the one we created up here. Last transaction row. That's the one we want. Okay, running the code again here. No issues on that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the data. We see that we've got here. We got numbers here. They don't necessarily need to be formatted, but they do need to be formatted once they make it into the report. So again, we have the results of six results. We've brought in the formula down here. You see the formula is automatically based on our values here, based on our account. So we know the total expenses are 1734 for the period, gross profit 49.24, and so on and so forth. This should not be really here. That's not really an account here. So I would change this. It's not really an account here. So we want to make sure that's kind of a, just a let's call this uh, um, something else, something else that doesn't make sense. So let's just call it return income labor earned. Let's do labor earned sold. Okay, I like that better because it's not really, that doesn't make much sense, huh? that label there. Okay, so let's rerun it here. It makes a little more sense here. And let's go back into the data here and take a look at it and make sure that we're on, on par here. And I see that we have here, let's pull it up here. Okay, good. I like that here. Labor sold, interest earned. So these are all the income accounts. Expense is not, as an, is not an income, so we should update that. But let's take a look at that. I don't want that as an income. So we'll take a look at income, and we want to make sure that I want to remove that expense. It's this one. This is called labor sold. Okay, that's better. Some, some data issues here, so we don't have to worry about that. So it looks clear. All right, continuing on, I've just rerun the macro here. We'll take a look at it here. And as we see here, we've got some income accounts here. So material sold, labor sold, interest earned, and dividend earned. Perfect. And we've got the accounts associated. I like that. Okay, great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to simply repeat the process for the cost of goods sold and repeat the process for the expenses, running that advanced filter. So let's go ahead and do that and let's modify that accordingly. Here inside the code, what we want to do is simply duplicate it. So, But I'm going to take this here. We've already cleared the content. And then I'm going to drop it down. We're going to focus on the cost of goods sold. So this is for income. So let's put just put a little note here called income results. And now what I want to do is focus on cost of goods sold. So let's put in cost of goods sold results. So we're going to paste in that. And so now the income criteria, this is going to be cost of goods sold. So we're going to change this to cost of goods sold. Only those accounts that are associated with that. So we're going to set that cost of goods sold, focusing only on that one now, cost of goods sold. Now what we want to do is we have the same criteria, right? But we've set it in. We have the same original data. We have the same criteria, but we want the results in a different location. Where do I want to put those results? I want to put those results right here located in AM. Previously, it was AJ for income. Now we want those costs to get sold right located in AM2 is where we want those results. So we're going to update this right here. Instead of AJ2, we're going to put AM. And then we want the last cost of goods sold. We have a different variable on this time, cost of goods sold. And this is called the last cost of goods sold. So we're going to update that variable, COGS. And again, we're going to update it here. We also want to make sure here, last cost of goods sold. So now what we want to do is we want that formula. That form is not going to be AK anymore. That formula is now going to be where? It's located right here in AN. So AN is what we're going to be looking for here. So we're going to update that to AN3, last cost of goods sold, making sure that there is data. AN, and then we're going to use the last cost of goods row. There we go. So, and of course, it's going to come directly from AN. All right. I like that. Let's continue on. And we want to make sure that we've had everything. And we're going to run that macro. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the results generated by that. Okay. So now we see we've got cost of goods sold here, right here. Everything's here. Looks really good. Just the way I like it. And the farm is grown. Okay. Lastly, all we need to do is repeat that for expenses. So I'm just simply going to copy this here. And then we're going to modify that for expenses adding a row and then what we're going to call this pasting that in there and we're calling expense i know i'm moving fast we got a lot to cover and of course you can rewind this and watch it as many times as you like so we're going to set that this can be called the expense criteria so we're going to update that to expense criteria i'm going to change this we want to set the criteria account type to expenses we want it called expenses let's make sure that we have that right we only we're going to focus on those ones that are called expenses right we're only looking for expense type that's all we want inside the type and we want those results to appear right here in ap and we want that formula in aq so that's what we're going to add it up okay so we're going to create we want the same criteria we're going to set the same 
hit criteria except this time it's going to be expenses. We want those results to come into AP. And we want the last called expense row, EXP. That's the variable that we created up here, last expense row. And we want it inside this time is going to be AP, right? We want to know the last expense row based on AP. And we're going to update this to expenses, the note. And then what we're going to do is I want to know the last expense row, update that variable. And we also want to do, right, if this is going to be AP, this one, our form is going to go into AQ. Q is where our form is located for expenses. So we're going to update this to AQ. And we're going to update this to AQ. And we're going to change this to expenses. And we're going to change the one above to expense formula. We're going to change this to cost of goods sold. We didn't do that before. So now we've updated everything. So we know, let's take a look at this. This is going to be APR results. We're going to check for the last row of our last expense row. And we want to make sure that it's greater than two. If it is, we're going to bring down the formula for last expense, right? Updating this last expense row. That formula. I like that. Let's run it. All right. Take a quick look down and see what we have created inside our results. So we've got our expenses account here. We've got our totals here. Remember the form. We don't need to format it for currency or anything like that accounting because we're going to bring it over. We're only focused on the data. So we've got all of our results. I really like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to bring these over into the profit and loss. Okay. So we're going to continue to write some code just for that. So the first thing what I want is I want to keep track of the profit and loss row. So the first row is going to be seven. So we're going to set that variable to seven. So let's go ahead and do that now. So back into the code here and we'll do P and L row equals seven. So that's going to set the initial row. set initial. It's going to change row for P and L. So now once we set that initial row, what I want to do is I want to check to make sure that we actually have income items, right? So if not, what we're going to do is we're going to skip, right? We don't need to bring over any income items if there are no any income items. So how do we know that? So if the last income row is less than three, it means we have no results, right? then go to no income. So we're going to, we're just going to skip a few lines. So I'm going to put no income. And so what that's going to do is skip what we're about to do. So I want to bring over the income items, but if there is no income items, then we need to skip it. So first thing, what I want to do is I want to add that plus icon for all of the items, right? So we're going to focus on that profit and loss. What I want to do is remember you saw that plus there, that's going to allow us to expand it. And I want that plus to appear right here in column C on the right side here. I want to put that plus, but how many do we know? How many do we need? Well, we need to know the total number of income, right? We're going to add in. So we know if we've got five, four different income items, we need to add in four different uh, pluses right here, right? So that's what we're going to do inside the code right now. Okay, so we're going to say the profit and loss, okay? Profit and loss dot range, and we're going to start out with column C. So that column C and the PL row, we're starting out that PL row, and, okay, colon C. And what? And the last in the PL row. So we're going to add in that PL row. We're going to also add in the number of income rows plus the last income row minus three. Minus three. So we're going to subtract three. That's going to be because our first one starts on row three also. So that's it. And the value of that is going to equal what? It can equal plus, right? So let's take a look at that plus. Okay. So that's when we added add in expander. Okay, so we're adding in those expander icons and let's update this and one and sign in there. Okay, so now that we've got that, what we're going to do is we want to add in the values. So where are those values located? We're going to, they're going to come from AJ3, right? We want to add in those amounts. So where do I want to put in? I want to put in those accounts right here. So we've got the pluses in column C. In column D, I want to put those accounts. Now those accounts are going to come directly from AJ, okay? So we're going to add in that. Now all we need to do is just copy and paste and then make the updates accordingly. So let's do that right here. Copying this, right? Now it's going to come focus on column D, right? This is column D. And what do we want to add in there? Well, that's going to come in equals dot range. It's going to come from AJ. That's what we want AJ3 through AJ and the last income row, last income row. That's why it's so important, dot value. And then we're going to call this the income accounts, income accounts. Okay, we also want to know the values, right? The values are going to come from AK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this here. I'm going to paste it down here. And those are going to come, of course, from K, right? K, the next column over. That's where our amounts are coming from. So these are the income amounts, right? So we'll change this to amounts. Amounts. Now the income amounts are going to go where? Well, I'd like to put those in column H, right? Column H is where we're going to be putting them in, right inside here. All right, I want them to come right here. So column H is where we're going to put in the amounts. So let's go ahead and update that code right there. H here and H again. All right, 
Okay, I've got two workbooks open. One's the sample here, so sometimes you'll see another coupon. Okay, so H is where we're going to have those income accounts. Okay, very good. So that's very good. That's all we have, and then no income here. Okay, let's go ahead and run that macro, saving our work before we run it, placing it, okay, and we'll update that. That should be PL, and then we'll do that PL and then PL. Skip the word. All right, continuing on here, let's go ahead and T, take a look at our work. Inside here, we see materials. Good, we like that, and then the amounts coming inside column H. Perfect. Okay. And they're already formatted. So I like that there. Okay. So what I want to do is now we're going to put in the total income. So let's go ahead and add that in here. So we need that total income row. Okay. So even if there's no income, we're going to put that total income row. So I'm going to go down here. Now is what I want to do. So I want to check that last income row to see if we have uh, income values, nothing. If the last income row is greater than two, meaning we have income values, then we need to update that PL row. PL row is equal to the PL row plus the last income row minus two, right? I want to add basically all the income rows, right? Minus two. Okay, this is going to update the prof PL row, PL row. Okay, so now that we've updated the PL row, I want to go ahead and add in that total income label. So it's going to be the profit loss dot range we're putting that directly inside column c c is we're going to take it and the pnl row dot value equals total income that's our label so total income so that is add total income label okay so now we add it have add in that value where's that value going to go it's going to go in column h so i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to change the column associated with that it's the same row this one's going to be column h now h is simply going to be the value now where what is the value that we're going to be adding we have a named range under that if you remember inside our transaction we've already calculated that total income we have it directly here so that total income, we have a named range called total income. So I'm going to copy that named range. I'm going to go back inside the code. I'm going to use the brackets for that. I'm just going to paste in that bracket. And that's it. That's all we need. That's going to be the total income. Let's go ahead and run that, right? We'll add in the conditional formatting at the end, right? So let's go ahead and put that in. Take a look at that. See what we've created here. Make sure that we have the total income. Perfect. That's everything we need here. Remember, conditional formatting we'll be adding in later. Okay, so now we've got the total income. Now we're going to add in the cost of goods sold. So next up, cost of goods sold. Let's go ahead and add that in now. All right, let's go ahead and increment the PL row. PL row is equal to the PL row plus one plus one so we increment it right we want to go one row down p and l row so now we can add the cost of goods label it. i want to add that label in so we're going to do range actually let's go ahead and uh, add that profit and loss dot range and then c is where we're going to add it in c and the pnl pnl row dot value is equal to cost of goods sold that's the label for it Okay, again, we want to increment the row one more time, right? As we move down, right? We only want the label on one. Okay, so we're incrementing a row one more update to add the cost of goods sold. Now I need to make sure we want this label regardless if there are no cost of goods sold or not, right? So we're going to go one row down. But what I want to do now is I want to add data, but I only want to add data if there have been cost of goods sold. So it's going to be very similar to what we've done this. So I'm going to copy this just as we've done the income. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to paste that in and we're going to update it. So this time we're going to do if last co cost of goods roll is less than three, then we're going to go to no COGS. Then we're going to skip down COGS. Okay. I'm going to add that label right in here. No COGS colon there. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and put that, make that a smaller. All right. So I like that. So what I want to do is I want to make sure if there's cost of goods sold, we're going to add this in. If not, it's going to skip directly to here. So the profit and loss C and the PL row through last, and this time we're going to go for the last cost of goods rule so cogs we model just added in right here so we're going to copy that and wherever it's used we're going to paste it in here paste it in here and then we're going to update it so we're going to make the update it here and then we're going to add an expander icons for the cost of goods sold again we're pasting that in here last cost of goods rule and last cost of goods row here again here as well and then we're going to change it here the label these are going to be the cost of goods accounts and we also want the cost of goods amount now where are they located of course they're not located in the same place those amounts and accounts where are we pulling it from well of course we're going to distract extract it directly from here so our, we've already covered our income accounts our accounts are coming from am and our amounts are coming from AN. So we need to make those updates accordingly. So our amounts are coming from accounts are coming from AM. And our amounts are coming from AM. 
and then an here. So our mounts are coming from an. Very good. I like that. Now we've updated it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We're going to run the macro. Again, saving our work before we run it. Running that macro, continuing on. Okay. Again, fixing that that uh, variable there, PL row. Just adding that L in there. Okay, continuing on. All right. Again, one more time here. As I did it twice, copied and pasted it both. All right. Updating the variable accordingly and then go ahead and continue to run it. I like that. Let's take a look at the results down here and we see that we've got the profit and loss. And then we've got a cost of goods sold here like that. We've got the amounts. Great. Now we're ready to add in the total row, but we only want to add in the total row, of course, regardless if there's data or not. So let's go ahead and update that total row right here. So I'm going to update. I'm going to, in fact, we're going to copy this just the way we have it. Just like, in fact, I can copy all of this because we're going to use it again. I'm going to paste it down here. So right here, considering on. So now we just need to update this accordingly. Again, cost of goods sold, right? We're focused on that. If the last cost of goods row is greater than two, then we know we have it. Then we're going to add in. So we're just going to copy this because we'll be using it frequently. Updating our variables here. The last cost of goods row. We're updating it, right? We need to increase the last, the P&L row, based on how many cost of goods there are there were okay so now c is going to be the total again adding that label in called cost of goods sold and we want to know the total our variable is going to be total cost of goods sold updating that this is the total cost of goods label here and this is the total cost of goods amount right we already have that variable located that named range is located again we're going to increment it here and we're going to add in here so we don't this is going to be expenses right the next thing but not expenses before we want to know what do we want to know we want to know the gross profit so let's add in the gross profit okay great so we want to add that and i also want to add in the amount right so what is the amount of that inside the next h is going to take it actually let's go put the profit in i so the next one's going to be i i and the gross profit what is that value here it's it's inside the brackets right brackets here gross profit we're going to go over both of those and see where i've got those from we know the total cost of goods sold here and our gross profit we're going to be putting in as we increment it okay saving our work let's take a look at those named ranges that we created previously just so you can familiarize with them once again so inside here the transaction we're pulling that data directly from here the cost of goods sold that total cost of goods sold and we're pulling the gross profit here and i want those to appear directly here if i now assign that macro let's go ahead and assign that macro to the one that we're working on click assign macro we only see a few we're going to click this workbook that's the only one profit and loss refresh is the one that we're working on now we can click this button we can see so now we have total cost of goods sold 18 that's correct and we have the gross profit in column i at 52,000 okay great i really like that that looks really good if we want to check our work all we need to do is just do this equals sum right just to make sure that we have a thing everything associated we want to sum that out and make sure that it's actually correct so we see 18,061 it's exactly the way we have it that is our total we can do the same thing for income so now we've got our gross profit now what i want do is I want to add any expenses. Expenses is going to go directly in column C. So let's go ahead. We've already added that in. So continuing on, we've incremented the row ready for to add in those expenses. And we can do that. Now it's very, very similar to what we've done. So again, what we can do is we can just copy and paste, saving a whole lot of time. So continuing here, we're going to add in here, right in here. We're just going to copy all of this these cost of goods sold, and we're going to update it for expenses. So going down here, and then we're going to update this. So I've pasted those in here, and we're going to update that. After gross profit, we're incrementing a row, and let's go ahead and add in expenses. And we have expenses, so we're going to change that label. Here's the label in column C, expenses. And we're going to increment the total, right? And we want to know the last expense row, so we're going to expense row exp that's our variable here i'm going to copy that because we're going to be using it frequently so we're going to go to no expenses right in case there's no expenses i'm going to drop it down here right into the unwith and we're going to go to no exp exp that's where we're going to skip to if there's no expenses exp all right so now that we have that so what i want to do is i want to update that so the c is where it's going to take it right last expense row that's what we're going to focus on let's change those variables last expense row and last expense row. Okay, we're gonna add in the expander icons. We wanna do that. Where's our expense accounts coming from, right? Our expense account, e-expense, expense accounts are coming directly from, let's take a look so we can see. And they're going to come directly from here, right here. AP is our accounts, AQ is our amount. So that's what we wanna pull it in, AP and AQ. So 
pulling in the data here. AP is where our accounts are coming from. We're going to change that to AP. And we got to make sure that we update that to last expense row right here as well. The variables need to be updated here and also here. So we got that. And our formula total amounts are coming from AQ. So we're going to update that here. So we've got the expense accounts, the expense amounts located there. I like that. And then we have no expense. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add in the label, right? We certainly need to know the label. That label is going to go directly inside column C. And then it's going to go after we update that. But we need to do, I want to make sure. So we're going to update this. We're going to copy this. That's what we're going to focus on here. Right after we add in the amounts, then what we want to do is I want to increment the PL row based on the expense. So I'm going to add change this to EXP. All right, I'm going to change this. Right, let's go ahead and update that. Right, I want to increment the row there. So here's the last expense row. Update the PL row. Right, I want to add in the label for the total. Right, it's going to be total expenses here. So we're going to change this to expenses. And I also want to know the total expenses. Right, we've already covered expenses and we're going to add in expenses label right so we can just copy this right for the reward and we don't have to retype it and i'm going to add it in directly in here for our label and our note here so we're updating the pnl row we're adding in the total expense label we're adding in the total expense amount right so that's going to be the same and that's going to go directly inside here okay great but actually let's go ahead and put this up here so that means even if there's no expenses even if there's no expenses i still want to update the row but only if there's expenses i still want to put in a total expense i still want to put in the amount even if there's nothing because i want to show that zero okay great saving our work so far right we're going to go ahead and run the macro here let's take a look and see what we have created here inside that and we're going to pull it up right here. Okay, bringing it in. Okay, so we have expenses. We have all of the expenses here. And then we have our total expenses. Awesome. That looks really good. Let's go ahead and double check our numbers. We're going to do equal sum just to make sure that we have it right. We're going to add up all these expenses and make sure that we got the 39974 Perfect. Just the way I like it. Great. Now all we need to do is add in our net profit. I'm going to skip a row and then we're going to add in net profit right here. And I want that net profit to go directly in column I. Okay, good. So let's take a look at that inside the code and we're going to continue on with the code. We're going to start by incrementing the PL row so we can copy that and we're going to increment it one. And then what we want to do is we want to update, we want to add in the net profit label and we want to add in the net profit amount. So we can basically just copy this here and then paste it right down here and then make the updates. So this is going to be net profit. I should have added a space in there, net profit, right? This should be a space here. And I also want to add in the net profit. This is the named range, I believe. Net profit is correct. And so we're going to add in that. And then what I want to do, all right, so let's take a look at that. And we'll run the macro, take a quick look at it. I've already run the macro, bringing it on. Okay, so we've got net profit of 14,000, right? Our net profit, of course, is our gross profit minus our expenses. So if we were to double check that, we're going to say equals, right? Simply our gross profit minus our total expenses. And that's going to get us our net profit. So we enter that. We see it's 14306. That is the correct name. Perfect. That's exactly the way we want it. Everything's adding up perfectly. And now what we'll do is we're ready to add in some conditional formatting, right? We have everything here. All right, so let's take a look at what kind of conditional formatting. We can bring this up here for a little bit so we can see more data. Okay, the first thing what I'd like to do is every row that includes total, I want to give it like a light brown look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all this here. And then what I'm going to do, let's say we can go to probably here. We don't need to know the totals, right? Gross profit and net profit will do something a little bit different with that. So I'm just going to go all the way down, right? We're going to, and what we're going to do is we're going to go into conditional formatting, home, right? And then what we'll do is we're going to go to manage rules. We're going to create a brand new rule based on a formula so we're going to do equals we're going to look at a find i'm using the find command what am i looking for i'm looking for the word total so we're going to put that in quotes total and where do we want to find it i want to look for it in column c so we're going to use column but i want to use every single row within column c so i'm going to remove that dollar sign no absolute there i'm a column i'm looking in the first character right and if that's going to equal one then i know it's been found so we're going to format that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a fill effects that similar color here we're going to use the light brown here, and then we're going to use the light brown here. Also, same color here, clicking OK. I also want it bold, so we're going to click bold and click OK. 
and then okay once we go and then we're going to apply that and we see that that's now been applied to everyone that has totals perfect that's just the way i want and i also want to know which ones are profit i want to give that profit going to be that brown dark brown for both of the ones that include profit well profit you see are the only ones that have gross profit and net profit are the only ones that have values in column i so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to simply highlight those all the way over. we'll go all the way down we'll add to that and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into conditional formatting and manage the rules right and i also want to update this to more rows so we'll change that to 999 Okay, apply that. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to click a new rule and I want to use a form to determine. And I want to make sure it's going to be only focused on this, right? Any value with column I, right? Column I does not equal empty, right? So of course it's going to be for any row. So we're going to remove the dollar sign. Six does not equal empty. And then what we're going to do is we're going to format that. I'm going to give it again another fill, but this is going to be that darker brown, that darker brown similar color that we've been using. And I'm going to use, so now this is going to be, of course, a dark fill. So I'm going to click OK. And I want the font to be white on this case. So I'm going to change the font to white. And I also want it bold, clicking OK. All right, and clicking OK. Remember, this is only going to apply. Click, all right. And then we want to make sure to apply J. And then we'll just use a large row here, 999. And then click Apply. And we see that that is now automatically applied. So we see that we have, perfect. So we the rows that are are have contained values in column I are highlighted with that brown. And that's exactly what I want. Continuing on, what I also want is I want to be able to add in some conditional formatting. I want some lines to go above here, right? So you see some lines right above here. I want to add in those for every value. I want to put a line above it. So what we're going to do is we're just simply going to highlight those here. Then I'm going to go down here, all the way down. And then I'm going to add in a brand new conditional formatting here. So home, conditional formatting. And then we'll click on a new rule using a formula here. And in fact, these cases, I want to make sure that there's a value in column H, right? We'll use H in this case so we know because there. And that's when I want to add in that. So using column H here for every single row does not equal empty. I want to give it a border just above it. So it does not equal empty. I'm going to format that. Let's bring that over into view. Formatting it. We'll use a border here. So border. We'll sign it that color. That's one of the similar colors here. And we'll give it a dotted top line border. Clicking OK. Click OK. All right. That looks nice. I like the way that that looks. It's coming together now. So we have our, our P&L pretty much associated here. When I click refresh, it's automatically going to refresh. Now, of course, we want to print it. Why don't we add in the macro to print it? And then what we're going to do is we're going to show in that macros that automatically expand and reduce it. So let's get that print macro done out of the way. All right. So going back in our code here, let's go into the right module here. This is the one I want. Print report is what we're going to do. So we're going to dimension the print range as a string okay that's gonna we need the range because i need to basically print regardless of how long it is so what i want to do is set the print range the print range is going to equal to the profit loss dot range i want to know the last row so we're going to start it out where are we going to start it out well we'll probably start it out somewhere in let's say b5 right so b5 is going to be that first row we don't want to print the top ones b5 all the way through i and whatever the last row is that last row is going to be based on the last value here right here in column c so to do that we can say b5 is our starting b5 and then what is it going to be through well it is through column i and we need to determine the last row and that last row is simply going to be based on column c that's going to determine the last row so what do i want from that well i want that address from that okay so we're going to click this dot address i want to know the address of that is that address is going to be the range Ad address of print range okay so once we have that print range what we can do is we can simply add it let's go ahead and add that up in here and we need an and that right because it's going to be the and we want to add in that last row and then what we're going to do is we can set that print area so we're going to do the profit loss dot page setup okay we're doing the page setup then that page setup we're going to set that print area and what's that print area is going to be it's going to be equal to that print range we just set print range once i have that print range all we need to do is simply print it out so we're going to do again profit loss dot print out and what are we printing out well i want to print out to the default printer right so we can do from one we don't need to do that just comma two copies one copy preview i'll do false we don't need to preview it active printer true we'll set the active printer so it'll print to the active printer print to file no call it print to file name ignore print area is false we certainly do need it to print to using the printer great so i like that print report that's going to be set out saving their work make sure we assign the macro to that now what we're going to do is we're going to assign the macro to this button that we've created so we're going to click assign macro 
and print report clicking OK and not my default printer snag it so it's going to print it and then we just need to update that to the set the sheet name here there's no sheet name no width so profit loss okay that's sufficient there and then we'll continue on that and then we'll go okay so it's going to print out to my default printer and we're going to check it out all right let's take a look okay that looks very nice it's encompassed all the data we've got very looks very good got our full profit and loss report okay so it's now printing right now all we need to do last up is just add these expanders when i click on this plus i want it to expand when i click on the minus i want it to reduce just as we did in that sample so how are we going to do that well that's going to be based on the selection change event so let's go back into the vba we're going to focus on the page profit and loss right we're going to focus on select when i make a selection change that's what I want something to happen okay worksheet and selection change before I forget there was one more thing I wanted to do on change this is gonna be very very simple so basically when a user makes a change to a date here right or a date here I want this particular report to refresh so any change on e3 or g3 we want to refresh the report well that's relatively simple so how are we going to do that I'm just gonna go inside this here I'm gonna copy that name here report refresh I'm going to go into the worksheet change, meaning when a user makes a change to one of those two cells. So we're going to go back into the profit, and this is going to be worksheet change. So let's focus on when the user makes a change. And the user makes change to which cells? We're going to focus on just those two cells, E3 or G3. E3 or G3. When they make a change to either one of those cells, what do I want to do, right? I want to then run the report. Then run that report, right? Run report on date change okay relatively simple so going back inside here now when they make a change let's say they change it to 431 right we want to refresh that report okay obviously we need the date 431 there we go that's a correct date making a change here all we need to do is just change to april 30th all right perfect i like that that's looking really good now let's go ahead and update making those changes on that so we can easily expand so now that's going to be on the selection change right selection change we make a selection we want something to happen. Well, what are we going to do? Well, first thing, what's the, if not, intersection? C, we're going to make a selection change. Where? Where are we making that selection change? Column C here, that's the only one. So we're starting it out in C7. That's going to be the first one. And it's going to go all the way through along. We'll just do C7 through C9. C7 through C and then 999. Use a large number. Is nothing. Then what do we want to do? Then something. Then and if, well, I also wanna make sure that the target is either a plus or a minus. If not, we don't wanna do anything. So if range C and the target dot row dot value does not equal plus, the plus, right? We're only focused on the plus and, and range C and the target row and the target dot row dot value does not equal the minus, right? It's gotta be one of those two otherwise, right? then exit the sub exit sub only if the user has clicked on one of those the plus or the minus so that's all we're going to do there assuming that it does we're going to dimension some variables so we're going to do dimension the last data row as long and in the last data row i also want to know the last p l row last p and l last p and l row as long we're going to have an advanced filter so we need to know the results of those so the last result row as long and i also need to know the number of results how many results are it? results result rows as long and i also want to know what row has been selected so the selected row as long great once we have all those variables then what i want to do is i want to dimension also the shrink rows how many rows are we going to be shrinking dimension the shrink right when we shrink it how many rows are we going to be shrinking shrink rows as long as long great all right so also if the target dot count large is greater than one meaning the user has selected more than one cell then we can exit the sub then exit sub exit on selection of more than one cell also if the target value is empty target just in case target dot value equals empty then exit sub just to make sure that we have clicked on something proper okay now that we want to do i want to know the last row of the pnl right the last row remember it's column c so the last pl row is equal to column c right column c is going to be the last right we don't need the dot here we're focused on the sheet so we don't need that okay and i also want to set the selected row variable so the selected row is simply equal to the target or equal to the target so we're going to get all of this is regardless of whether they selected a plus or a minus so now we're going to get into the differentiation whether they select the plus or the minus if they select for the plus we need to drill down and expand it if they select the minus we need to shrink it up so first of all we're going to turn off the event so application dot enable events 
equals false. We're going to turn that on, make sure we turn it on. And also application dot screen updating equals false. We're going to turn those on before we get to the end. No, false. Just in case, let's do it right now. Application dot enable events equals true. Turning that back on. And then also the same thing with the screen updating. So application dot screen updating equals true. Okay, so we're turning that back on. So everything's going to happen in between here. So what do we want to happen? Well, first of all, I need to know if we're going to be expanding it. So if range C and the target dot row dot value equals the plus sign plus then we know we're going to be expanding then we're going to be expand let's complete that else and if else we're going to shrink so for the expand what are we going to do well the first thing what i want to do is i want to determine we need to run an advanced filter right for example right if i want to know all the materials sold i need to know all the materials sold within a given date so we need to run an advanced filter and we're going to do it inside here. So we have some drill down criteria here. We already have our transaction date here. Same thing, greater than or equal to the from date. Transaction date less than or equal to the due date. All I need to do is put in the account here. So AU and 3, AU3 is simply going to be equal to whatever's to the right, which is in D, materials sold. If I click here, I want materials sold to be put directly in AU3. So let's take care of that right now. So we're going to do transaction database dot range. Okay. AU3 dot value is equal to what is it going to be range simply D and the selected row and the selected row dot value set account criteria. So once we know that set the count criteria, I also want to set that plus and turn it into a minus. So the target dot value is equal to minus, right? Let's change that to the minus symbol. So it's going to be expand and we'll just call it shrink call the shrink icon shrink icon so once we set i also want to know the last data row the last data we're going to be running an advanced filter so i need to know the last data row it's going to be equal to the transaction database right based on the last row so we'll set that equal to transaction database it's the last transaction row last transaction row if let's do last result row last result row is less than three then exit sub in fact okay i like to put this just in case there's no data i'm going to put this right here that's good i only want to add that shrink icon if there's actual data okay obviously there should be data if we've got a, a value okay so now that we know that we have data right we can and we've added the shrink icon we can continue on so what i want to do is i want to run that advanced filter so we're going to focus on this and i want to add in that transaction database that's what we're focused on transaction database range it's going to be a2 all the way through e2 through e and where's that criteria coming from we've already added in the dates we've already got a date and we've already added that account criteria located in AU3. So let's take a look at that and set that criteria. It's going to come directly into this. That criteria here is located right here. Drill down criteria. AS2 through AU3. That is what we're going to AS2 through AU. So AS2 through AU3. And where do we want those results to come? I want those results of that filter to come directly in the drill down results here. I want to know the transaction date. I want a description. I want to skip a column and I want to go through AZ. Now, when we skip a column in the results, we need to make sure that our original data includes a blank column. So we should come all the way to F when we do that. All the way to F, include that blank because our results include a blank too. So Right. We want those results to come directly inside here, right? So bringing it up here, here's going to be our results located in columns AW2 through AZ. That's where we want the results to come. So AW, let's go ahead and update that AW through AZ, W through AZ. So now what I want to do is I want to determine the last results row. And if that last results row is less than three, of course, we have no data. We want to make sure that we do have data. We should, of course. So here we go. So last results row, I'm going to make sure that it's going to be based on column. What is the column? It's not column AA. It's going to be column AW. It's going to be our last results. So I want to make sure that we have it. If it's less than three, we're going to exit the sub. So last results row. If last results less than three, then we want to make sure that exit the sub. We'll change that to three and last result rows less than three exit them in case we don't have any results. If we do have results, I want to bring over those results. So how do we going to do that? We're going to set the results row. I want to know the number of results. So the re result rows equal to the last result row minus two. 
minus 2. Why is that? Well, because if we have results located right here, right, if they're coming to 7, I want to subtract 2 so I know that we only have 5 rows. I want to know the number of results because it is those number of results that we're going to need to expand on that. So continuing on, so we know the last results, so we've got that into a variable, the number of results. So we want to know the number of those results. Once we have that, we can then continue on and bring those results over. So how we can do that range, I'm going to bring it over. C, I want to put that results. And I want to know also the selected row, selected row, plus one, right? It's not going to be that selected row, plus one. That's the row below, all the way through I. I want to copy those. I want to bring down, right? I need to bring down whatever's in it. I and the last PL row. I want to copy everything and the last PL row dot copy. So what am I doing here? Let me show you an example. If I need to know that I'm going to insert three rows here, I need to take, let's just remove this dot reference. We don't need that, and that's not going to be helpful here. And any other instances of that, because we're making sure the last results row, we need to add the transaction database here. That's the database we're focused on, transaction database. So now that we have the transaction database located here, I want to make sure that we have it here as well transaction database continuing on continuing on here that looks good and also the same thing here i need to add in that database we're focused on that also here and the next one we also want to make sure that it's also set up here inside the results here because that's the one we're doing okay good so that's just auto hotkey continuing on all right and we want to make sure that we have the last results row that last results row is actually going to be the last data row last data data row i like that that looks good and then result rows we have that variable should be last result row let's take a look at the number of results we're going to set that to result rows and we'll just update the variable right here to result rows okay so make sure we have the number of result rows i had variables update all right it's looking good so what i want to do is basically i want to take all of whatever's below it all the way here and bring it down i'm going to copy it bring it all and bring it down the number of rows of the results so that's what we're doing we're simply copying it and bringing it down however many rows so the first thing what we want to do is we want to copy and then what i want to do is i want to paste the values i really only want to post paste the values because i don't want to upset our conditional formatting so how are we going to do that well what we're going to do is going to do range c and the selected row plus one, or we need to add one row, one row down, right? And then we want to know the number of results, so adding in the number of results, so plus the result rows. We're going to paste that, dot paste, it's paste special, only the values that we're going to be concerned, only those values. So let's go down here, pasting those values in, right? Not upsetting the conditional formatting. Once we've pasted the values, what we want to do is simply clear the contents of the existing cells so we can do that with the next line of code so we're going to focus on that now what we want to do is range again only c and the selected row plus one right the row below is what we're going to be select plus one all the way through i and colon i and the selected row of course and the selected row again plus the number of result rows plus the result rows clearing those con result rows dot clear contents okay we'll go ahead and update that now let's go take a look at that and see what we have saving our work let's take a look and see how we've gone so far all right so continuing on so what i want to do is i want to click material saved and so what i want to do is i want to clear the rows out it brought down everything else and how many rows did it clear out it cleared out let's take a look you see all the way here is six rows so six rows is the number of rows that we add going into our transactions and we see here our results we have six result rows of results so it is these results that we're going to be bringing in so we've got material sold here's the criteria all the material sold is here we've counted the number of rows six we've cleared out the number of rows preparing to put in that data right here so let's go ahead and write the next line of code that we're going to be adding in the data we can just click refresh report and everything's back to normal okay so let's continue on inside the code so we've already cleared that clearing the contents out we need to bring the data over so we can do that so range we're going to put it in column d d and the selected row selected row plus one right not the exact row plus one the row below right and all the way through g and okay through g and the selected row plus the results row and selected row plus the results result rows dot value is going to equal what Tra equals the transaction database 
dot range, where is it coming from? Column AW. If you remember, AW3 all the way through AZ in the last results row. And the last result row dot value. That's nice. All right, let's take a look at that. Saving our work again. Okay, going back in there. Now we see that clicking on here. Okay, that looks really nice. Okay, let's take a look at materials. Okay, so materials sold, that's exactly what I want, the data here. Now we haven't added the shrink, so that's not working yet. We're gonna add that in right now. Now what if I wanna shrink the data? Basically, I wanna determine the number of rows that we're gonna through. I wanna clear the contents, and I wanna take everything else and bring it up the number of rows. So let's write in the code to shrink it, and then we're gonna add in the conditional formatting, then we're gonna be done. Okay, great, so we've got expanding done, that's expand. Now what if it's shrink? If they click on the minus, what do we want to do? Well, first we need to determine the number of rows to shrink. So the shrink rows, shrink rows is equal to range. I wanna determine the cells, right? I wanna count the number, how many what are we going to do? We're going to count. I'm looking for the number of values in a particular column, right? What column are we going to be looking at? I want to know the target row plus the target column. How many values, right? What do I mean by that? I want to count. I want to know how many rows until we reach a bear. If I've clicked on this column and I know that there's it's going to be, let's say, seven rows of data before I, you know, that's okay, before I reach the next, I want to count the number of that until we reach a value, which is right here. So how are we going to do that? Well, inside VBA, we can do it this way. Okay, so range, again, let's do that. I want to count the number of blanks. So it's simply going to be cells. Then we're going to do the target. What is the target dot row? Well, that's the row. And what is the column? It's going to be the target. Actually, it's going to be the rows plus one, right? The row below, I want to count that. Start the, not the existing row. Target dot column. We want to look in that column. Perfect. And what do I want to do? What is the next part of that range? It's going to be all the way to the last. Let's just do a large number cells here and let's just do a large row 999 and what also the target column so this is our range dot column and what do i want to do i want to find i want to find what am i looking for i'm looking for the next row with a value so we're going to look for anything right so we're going to use the star for that the asterisk there and that's going to be our wild card and i'm going to look in excel values and i'm going to look for excel whole excel whole Okay, and what do I want to return? I want to return the row. I want to know the row, but not the row. I want to know how, exactly how many rows. So how are we going to find that? Well, that's simply the row minus the target row minus one. So it's the row minus the target dot row minus one. That's going to basically get us the number of rows until the next value. So that's going to get us. This is going to call the determine number of rows to shrink. So once we have the shrink rows, what I want to do is I want to uh, take the, the expand, clear any of the expanded data. So how do we know that? So range, I want to clear that out. All the data that we entered must be cleared. That detailed data should be cleared out. D and the selected row plus one. All the way, you remember we, we added in this data, right? Now we need to clear it out, right? So the D in the selected row plus one, all the way through G, colon G, and the selected row, and the selected row plus the number of shrink rows, shrink rows. Okay, we're gonna clear the contents, clear contents, clear expanded data. So it's gonna clear expanded data. Okay, let's see how that's works, see if we have any issues with that. Okay, saving our work. And then we're gonna go in and take a look. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna clear that expanded data. That's exactly what I want. Notice it cleared all the data exactly only on. So it counted the number of rows, right, from the target row minus one, and it cleared all the data out. Now all I need to do is take the rest of the data and bring it up and then clear out the remaining data at the bottom. So that's what we're gonna do in the remaining cells. Okay, so we've cleared out the re remaining data. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to copy the remaining values below. So range, okay, starting with column C, C of course, that's where our data is, and the selector and the selected row, plus the number of shrink rows plus one, plus shrink rows plus one. Okay, so that's what I want to do. And, right, all the way here, and all the way through column I, right, we want to get all the data and copy it, and the last PL row, and the last PL row. We know the last one, and I want to copy that. So we're going to copy that. And then what do I want to do? I want to simply paste it in the row below. So range C and the selected row 
plus one dot pay special and then again only those values right only values right we don't want to upset conditional formatting so we're pasting only those values so pasting the values in now what i want to do is i want to clear the remaining rows at the bottom right because there's duplicate rows at the bottom that i need to clear out so to do that what we're going to do is going to do range here c and the last p l row minus the number of shrink rows right simply that's the, how we minus the shrink row so we know how many we got duplicated plus one and okay so we're going to continue on and and then i all the way through that's the column i control let's see colon i and the last pnl on the last pnl row dot clear console so we're just clearing out those last duplicated items okay so clear out last duplicated lines very good i like that let's take a look at that all right continuing on cut and now i just want to do one more application dot cut copy mode equals false okay that's going to remove those dancing ants okay not that one false equals false very good okay saving our work as we always do always a good idea let's refresh the report and start over we're going to expand the material sold let's say shrink rows let's fix that variable continuing on and another one misspelling these variables are very easy to do for me at least shrink rows that's the number of rows continuing on okay it looks good all right so taking a look inside our data here we've shrunk the rows and then we're going to continue all right i like that and now let's do one more thing and let's select e3 because i don't want those highlight cells so just right here range e3 dot select dot select okay so that's just going to basically so it's the range is not selected all right let's take a look at that so we're going to refresh the report here expand that i like that and then reduce that that looks good expand that and expand that that looks very good and then shrinking that and then shrinking this okay it looks like we need to add in we need to add the plus symbol that's the only thing that we need to do so let's add that in right continuing on right shrink rows first thing we want to do is to change that so target dot value equals the plus that's the only thing we forgot there no worries easy enough to add that in okay refresh the report here shrink it out and then shrink it up okay that looks really nice okay let's go ahead and add some conditional formatting what i want to do is i want to conditional format those cells that i want to put alternating rows on that okay so we're going to focus just on columns d through g so i'm going to highlight those and I'm going to go into home and I'm going to do conditional formatting and I'm going to do a new rule. It's only going to be when values are contained in column G. That's fine. We can use that formula. So we're going to do equals, right? And then really focusing on column G, of course, any row within that column. So it's going to be G stick starting at G6. Any row does not equal empty. I want to color it, but I want to give it actually two conditions. I want it alternating. So how do we do that? We're going to do and, right? That's going to be one condition. The other condition is going to be if it's a e odd or even row. So we can use mod for that. So mod of row two equals zero. Well, that's going to be for even rows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the parentheses. So it's going to be those two conditions. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to get a, give a format. And then I'm going to give it a fill fill effects i'm going to give it that light brown color that we've been using and then i also want to give it a little bit of a border on that so we're going to click ok and then i want to do maybe just the dark brown border on that like let's say this border here just something very light all the way around clicking ok okay so that's great for even rows i'm going to click ok and what about odd rows so i'm going to click on home conditional formatting and then new rule that's fine and then I've copied that. So I'm just going to paste it in here. I'm going to change this to one. So we're going to do very similar, except this time I'm going to change it to white. So I want that fill white color. I want those borders still to be that dark brown. So we're going to clear that and then use the dotted line and then all the way around clicking OK and clicking OK. That's the way I like. There we go. So that looks really nice. So now when we see we've expanded it, we can get that nice conditional formatting here that's going to show those alternating rows for expanding it and that looks really good all right i like that it. it's created a great pnl from scratch as you've seen here in our drill down profit and loss we've got a bit of refresh report print the report and we're going to be able to automatically change that report based on those particular date changes just as we've done thank you so much for joining me if you do like to support this channel i would appreciate it we have an incredible 250 template workbook that you're just going to love at a low price go ahead and pick that up also of course if you like we have a patreon channel i'll be adding even more to this particular training what would you like to see i'll be adding a new training and an updated workbook on our patreon account each and every training thank you so much for your continued support and we'll see you next time thanks so much mm -hmm.